You can guess that our lecture for today is trauma. Now you might say, what do I need to know about trauma when I'm gonna be a dermatologist or a radiologist or whatever? Well, let me tell you a little story. This happened about three or four weeks ago. I was driving home to Chicago from my country home, which is about three, three and a half hours away. And I'm in the middle of nowhere, way in the distance that a truck got hit or skidding over because I couldn't see it well from a distance. But as you could see in the picture, this truck got totaled. The young men actually lifted me up and there was this guy, he was in the 60s and he was partly conscious and I climbed into the cab and the cab was just completely smashed and resuscitated him and kept his neck straight and we'll talk about that and, and did all the appropriate things. What's my point? My point is that you are going to be in situations where you may be the only physician, not a, not a trauma physician or anything, but the only physician. So the bottom line is that you have a moral and ethical responsibility as a physician to at least know about trauma. And so therefore I give you this story and scenario as a prelude for you to just at least become knowledgeable in trauma. So we're gonna talk about trauma now. And what I'm going to do is we're gonna go through a lot of interesting things. Now, when we talk about trauma, we always talk about the A, B, C, D, E. And what is that, the A, B, C, D, E? A is airway, B is breathing, C is circulation, D is disability, but think about D as the brain. Disability, but it's, think of it as the brain. And E is exposure and environment. I want you to understand that A, airway, B, breathing, C, circulation, D, disability, the brain, and E, exposure and environment. These are in the order of priority. What do I mean by that? Well, if you didn't have an airway, would you survive? No. So therefore, it's in order of priority. The A, B, C, D, E is also the order of priority. So one of the things that you always get taught, and when I was your age, I always wondered about this. They would say, well, talk to the patient. Talk to the patient. I'm not thinking, why am I talking to the patient? I mean, shouldn't I be you know, doing other things? But if the patient is talking to you and their voice is normal and they're making sense, think about this. You know that your A, B, and C are okay. What do I mean? If I'm talking to you now, my airway is okay. If I'm talking to you now, my breathing is okay. If I'm making sense in what I'm talking about, my circulation, blood to the brain, is okay. 